On today's show, the art of time. One Minnesota artist wanders beaches in search of her brush stroke. There, there has to be something textural about them that's interesting. And meet a high school senior who hopes his invention might help clean up our state. And keep sportsmen's garbage out of the dump. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC dealers. Hi everybody, Bill and I welcome you to Minnesota Bound. Up first today, a most unique Minnesota medium. Jennifer Zerbeck heads to Lake Superior in search of artistic inspiration. Waves, like time, tick eternal. On a lonely Lake Superior beach, Jennifer Zerbach finds her brush stroke. It's just kind of nice to go where there's nobody else. And I love the um, solitude of being on a quiet beach. Jennifer hunts for small bits of Great Lakes history, stories hidden in chunks of Lake Superior driftwood. There's, there's certain things that I, that I'm going for, I oftentimes reject just a straight stick. I'm not here for sticks. They have to have a, a curve. There, there has to be something textural about them that's interesting. Zerbach does not pick often, but when she does. Probably when I come up here, get about six of these bags. She lugs an ample supply home to her Moose Lake studio. where Jennifer unravels the art of a puzzle. It's pretty fun actually when you challenge yourself to take you know, this piece here and try to figure out how you're gonna make it look like something and attach it to you know, the next piece. It's, it's like having a 5,000 piece puzzle scattered all over your floor and putting it together, but I don't know, I find a lot of joy in it. I love it. The pieces all placed just right. They end up looking like this. I just love building. There's something about the driftwood. It's, it's already uh, got this unique shape to it, and, and then I just build with what I've got. Zerbach's driftwood art started with a single, simple piece. To this day, it hangs on the wall at home. Well, that little moose, I refused to sell it. It was my very first moose, and that seems to be the most popular one. Everybody wants that little guy. She keeps wood bins full of future projects and gets a bit of help, too. So I've had a lot of wonderful, wonderful people that I call my driftwood fairies, and they drop off just mysteriously, they drop off piles or bags of driftwood at my door, and I love them for it. I realized I found something that people love. I love to do it. And now, local galleries covet Zerbach's art. And then when you look, get close to these things, you're gonna discover all sorts of wonderful individual pieces you fall in love with. Each of these pieces, you can imagine the story that the, the the driftwood tells where the tree, you know, what kind of a tree is it? Where did it come from? Can you envision it washing in a storm across Lake Superior and being tumbled on the beach? I think that's where it all started for Jennifer. Suppose that's why Jennifer keeps finding her way back to the driftwood beach. Story of my life, actually. I just kind of, I meander a lot, but I've made time to enjoy the, the little beauties along the way. The perfect Minnesota medium shaped by both time and water. A 
Up next, recycling in the great outdoors. A high school project helps clean up gun ranges. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers, Alumacraft, Radco Truck Accessories, and by Kinetico. Welcome back to the show. You know, I love this next story. It's all about the next generation getting involved in the outdoors. Travis Frank met a high school senior whose high school project may just change the way sportsmen and women recycle. Paul. Chris Spacek is not afraid to take a shot. Paul. He is a high school senior shooting on Orono, Minnesota's trap shooting team. Like his teammates, Chris shoots to perfect his aim. Hit or miss. Every shot ends a spent shell. The whole high school trap shooting sport has over 24,000 kids in it to date. So I mean just exponential amounts of shells being produced. Shells fill buckets. Buckets fill barrels. We were realizing all of them going into the landfill. Chris took aim at another shot, keeping them out. Yep, we box them up, throw them in the back of our car or truck, and bring them home. There, he had an idea. SSRM, shotgun shell recycling machine. His neighbor, Tom, brought it to life. I've always had that uh, ability to take a project and come up with a, a solution. You say a non-educated, no, non-degreed non engineer. <laughs> In Tom's garage, they recycle as a perfect team. Yeah. Okay. I play with the ideas and equipment, and he does the work. <laughs> what we do first is we take the shells, and we throw them in a, res a sorting machine. From that sorting machine, the brass goes one way and the steel goes the other way. Then we take them and we actually run them through the machine. Plastic shell casings drop left. Brass and steel fall to the right. When we bring to this yard, they can't have the steel primer in them. So we needed a machine to get the steel primer out of the brass shells. Again, Tom built the solution. Yeah, hammers. In seconds, shells are ready to recycle. The whole idea was to keep it out of the landfill. That's what started. It's good for the environment, first of all, but then second of all, I mean, the plastic, we can make money off of the steel, we can make money off of, so it's an opportunity sitting right there before us. An opportunity that hasn't come easy. We're the first ones to ever really do this. Right there. there we go. Right there, hung up right yeah. there. Right that's on the, unusual. Right on the lip, that's, okay. that's a new one. Hey, that was a new one. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely been a learning curve though, because there hasn't been a set path to go. Grinding ahead, they've recycled more than a half million shotgun shells. And counting. Yeah, yeah, we've cut a lot of shells. It's over 3,000 pounds of steel we've recycled. I would say it's satisfying to, yeah, see something that was going to waste actually have a purpose. This shotgunning trash has turned into their treasure. When we started out, we envisioned that every gun club would have to have two or three of these machines. 
And I think that's still a possibility. You might say they're aiming high. At this point, it's a garage operation, but it's got a massive possibility for, of growth. All because one high schooler took a shot at a sport he loves and leaving it better than the day he started. Paul. This is Greek to me, let me tell you. Because... Summer means outdoor grilling. Up next, we cook up classic kebabs with a deer camp twist. And later, our Minnesota bound classic looks back on a Duluth News Tribune icon. Closed captioning is brought to you by Minnesota Rebat. It's officially grilling season today in Wild in the Kitchen. I'm here with Chef Kevin Convalson from Fire Lake Grill House and Cocktail Bar. And Chef Kevin, when it's grilling season, that means we're usually consuming a lot of meat awesome. and vegetables and mm -hmm. some fish typically. Yeah. But I see venison here, so what yeah, are we making? Yeah, we sure making? do. Yeah, so we've got some Greek venison kebabs that we're going to do with some peppers and onion. We've got a little uh, yogurt sauce we're going to make. So it's, it's Greek in style. I love it. All right, so we have a marinade here, and I'm guessing it's important to marinate this venison since we're cutting it up in small pieces. Yep, it's already been cut up to about three quarters of an inch to an inch. Uh, we're just gonna dump everything into this bag and let it sit for two to 24 hours. 24 hours would be best. Okay. So go ahead, we're gonna dump in the juniper berry. Juniper berry. Yeah, fresh rosemary. All of it? Yep, the whole thing. Then we're gonna do soy sauce, orange juice. Freshly squeezed, yep. I can tell. And then Worcestershire. Say that three times fast. Worcestershire. <laughs> <laughs> That's yummy. And then we can put our meat right in there. And we can just pull that right out. Gonna squeeze out any excess air. And if you want to shake that. Shake it up. It sits for 24 hours, you said? Yep, perfect. Love it. Just kind of put a lot of flavor into that meat. Keep it juicy and moist when we grill it. Love it. Ready to do some chopping. <laughs> All right, it looks like that. All right, we're just gonna do a healthy pinch of that mint there. Watch the fingers. Watch your fingers, yep, very important. Go ahead, add that. A couple tablespoons? Yep. Next, we're gonna do one tablespoon of fresh lemon. Okay. If you wanna squeeze it right in your hand, catch any seeds. Next, let's add our yogurt. And how much Greek yogurt? That is about a cup and a half. This is plain Greek yogurt. Mm -hmm, yep. One of the added flavor. Yeah. And then we have uh, two tablespoons of harissa. Harissa. Yeah. Yeah, one of my favorite ingredients. Mm -hmm. We're basically just going to blend that together. Our sauce is complete. Does this need to sit like the venison does? Mm -hmm. Yep, 24 or 48 hours would be optimal. Let those flavors blend together. Yeah, exactly. Okay, time for vegetables? Yep. I'm ready for more chopping. All right. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do our onion first. All the way through about four times is fine. You can get about one inch pieces, perfect. Don't cry. You're making me cry, chef. <laughs> Those aside, now yep. it's time for our pepper. Yeah, so what I just like to do is cut off the ends and just come down one side. And then just kind of unroll it and you have everything here. Mm -hmm. This is the piece you want to use. It's a good, good way to show off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want to impress some people. Yeah. Perfect. Gotta have all the colors. All right, Lauren, so we're ready to skewer the kebabs. So I've got some pre-soaked little skewers here. We're gonna start with an onion, and you can go in any, any order. order you want. Now, when you're making kebabs, you want to leave space in between so everything cooks Just a little evenly. bit, yeah. You don't want to skewer it too tight. So I leave a little bit of room just so when you're oh, eating them, you can I see. a little handle Well, to this eat. is Greek to me, let me tell you, because I'm new at kebab assembling. Okay, this guy looks good. All right. All right, so we're ready for the grill. If you just want to throw them on, hot. we're just going to do a few minutes on each side. Yeah, the grill is super hot. So there you have it, a wild summer recipe made simple. I'm going in for a taste. All right. Here we go. Mmm. It's Greek. I mean, great. <laughs> Because 
Straight ahead, we meet Duluth's iconic outdoor writer. Sam Cooke will forever be a Minnesota-bound classic. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by By the Yard Maintenance-Free Outdoor Furniture, Running Aces Casino and Racetrack, Bent Creek Golf Club Eden Prairie, and by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. Have you ever wanted to play blackjack with no pressure? We now offer community card blackjack. It's a new twist to an old classic. Come check it out. It's only a dollar, and you can hit when you want to hit, split when you want to split, double down, or stay. Play how you want to play. Only at Running Aces Casino and Racetrack. Is this table new, or don't you ever use it? You have no idea. <laughs> By the yard, maintenance-free furniture. Elegance you can rely on. Call today for your free catalog or go online to buytheyard.net. Today's Minnesota Bound Classic takes a look back at one of the Midwest's most storied outdoor writers. Ron Shera introduces you to Sam Cooke, the very best in the Northwoods newspaper business. While the North Shore is famed for its artistry and nature, it has also inspired the people who live along this vast inland sea. Meet Sam Cooke, nature writer. Since his first book in 1986, the wilderness words of Sam Cooke have extended his fame beyond the North Shore. He can watch a leaf fall and write a chapter about it. Well, I think I really fell in love with writing when I worked for the Ely paper because, as you probably know, when you work for a weekly paper, you can basically do almost anything. Any, anything will get in the paper. Since 1980, Cooke's way with words have become familiar to readers of the Duluth Herald Tribune newspaper, where Cooke has been a regular outdoor columnist. My writing is probably conversational and, and pretty down to earth in, in most ways. I think I can um, uh, portray a scene or a, an experience uh, with a fair amount of detail um, in a way that makes people feel like they're there or if you've been there that, yeah, that's what it was like. Up north is the smell of the Duluth pack hanging in your basement and the sound of pots clinking across the lake. It's a raindrop clinging to a pine needle and the dancing light of a campfire on the faces of friends. Cook has had other job offers from larger newspapers, but all of them are in urban settings. To move away from the North Shore is not in his heart. This is such a wonderful place to jump off from. Uh, to go to the canoe country, to go to northern rivers, to go up the North Shore into Canada, around Lake Superior, to go over into Wisconsin. To, and there's so much to do here. The country is also full of outdoor characters, characters that Cook sniffs out like a bird dog. They flatten that tail out and pull themselves down the hole. I'm attracted to that kind of uh, wisdom and knowledge that comes with, with age um, in a lot of people. And it also, um, it lets me glimpse maybe where a lot of us are headed uh, and what it might be like for us to be there someday. With such a wealth of wilderness and characters in his backyard, Cook has written three books about his experiences, including the day he spent with the falling leaf. I watched where the wind was taking the big aspen leaves. I took up a position in a small clearing nearby. I waited for the tree to send me a leaf. They were brown and gold and yellow and splotched and wet and mottled and crisp and pungent. They were history. It's such a fine line there because as long as you're... A walk along Lake Superior are steps he's always willing to take. After all, inspiration is where you find it. To me, 
it's important to have that humility to, to realize that, wait a minute, we're not in charge here. We're little, little tiny creatures. Sooner or later, while considering the juncos and the muskrat lodges and the beetles, you come to consider your own niche in life. And when you've done that, the trout in your hand or the buck at your feet is all the sweeter. <laughs> Sam finally stepped away from his typewriter in April of this year. 38 years worth of stories at the Duluth News Tribune. 38 years, that's an honor. My dad was at the Star and Tribune for 40 years. It's a lot of outdoor storytelling between the two. Yes. Well, it's about that time. We'll see you back here next week. In the meantime, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook.